How's it going, everybody? Rosine here for Astro Photography, and tonight's vlog, yes, vlog. It's been a while since I did one of those, see if I can remember how to do one. <laughs> tonight's vlog, I'm going to be taking a photo of the comet. Basically, the same thing that everyone's been imaging. Uh, it's not a bandwagoning, don't care. I want to take a photo of this comet because 50,000 years, it's something to image. So, what I'm going to be doing tonight is I'm using the Eversar ATED, one of my favorite telescopes. Just love this telescope, it's so reliable. I'm gonna be using that initially. What you may actually realize, it's got a visual eyepiece holder on it. That is the Enpei Ruby turret. It's like, what is it? One, two, three, six position eyepiece holder. I could put a guide camera in there if I so wanted to, but I, I wanna see if I can look at this comet, see if I can see it in the eyepiece. It's going to be in the constellation of Auriga. It's gonna be nice and high Southwest. So it's gonna clear the house. I know that for a fact, it's gonna clear the house. So that's one benefit. It's another reason why I've got it up so high anyway. So I want to see if I can look at it, see if I can see the comet in the eyepiece. Uh, I could image with this rig, I could, has every capability of doing so, but what I'm actually going to image with is this rig right here. This one, this is the new rig I'm using at the moment with my new telescope on it. I haven't formally introduced this telescope on camera yet, it's a Stella Mira 90 ED triplet mounted on the ZWO AM5 mount. So the Stella Mira 90 EDT is a triplet telescope. So it's my second triplet I've used, but my first actual triplet. It's 540 millimeters focal length, 90 millimeters aperture. So very exciting. I really like this telescope actually. I've been admiring the Stella Mira series since they launched it. And obviously the AM5 been making a stir since it started doing the rounds really uh, strain wave mount or harmonic mount whichever way you want to refer to it that's why it hasn't got a counterweight so it does look really bizarre with this big top load on it with no counterweight it really does look bizarre but this has been sent to me through from uh, zwo but first light optics have fulfilled that consignment so i'm looking forward to testing this out seeing what it can do and reviewing that in the future mounted on a pier and this tripod. This tripod is surprisingly sturdy. That's really good, but I'm looking forward to testing this out. So this is the one I'm going to be imaging on. Uh, I'll put an L Pro filter in it. Uh, the camera is a ZWO 2600MC. So full uh, APS-C size frame. Yeah, put the L Pro in it. Again, send that over to Auriga and start taking some images with that. I'm getting excited. I am rapidly running out of light though. I tried that boom, reveal, took me about four attempts to get it right. So <laughs> hubris and all. So I've just slewed over to the coordinates, four hours, 57, 39 seconds, and then 31 degrees, 21 minutes, and from like seven seconds. And we can see it's just there just there on the right of the frame. That's the comment. Oops, said TF. So what I will do now, so if I long press there, I can tell it to go and it will center there. There we go. That's the comment. So let's try, um, I think guiding is on here. Yeah. I don't think I can track the comet in this, so there's not a comet tracking mode, so it's going to be something like, let's try 30 seconds. So I'm going to have to try and balance it between getting a good shot, a well-exposed image, as well as making sure it doesn't blur. I'm not sure how fast this target is moving, so it's going to be trial and error. It's my dog barking at me, thinks I'm an intruder. Guy didn't go in. Yeah. Oh, 30 seconds looks really good. Maybe I try a minute. All right, so this is a minute. Oh, it still looks sharp to me. Yeah, it still looks sharp. I'll try a minute long exposure, so auto run, 
Try 30 of them. See what we get from there. All right. Oh, it's going to autofocus. All right. I'll come back to that later. So this is probably one of the most extra things I've had to do. I realized I don't actually have a hand cable for this mount anymore. I have the controller, but not the cable. Uh, so I've had to use my old ASI Air Pro and a second phone as the hand controller so I can use this mount. That's really extra <laughs> and unnecessary. And uh, how lucky I am to be able to do that is not lost on me. So yeah, just gonna have a look over camera. Yep, yeah, there we go, up there, Jupiter. So I'm gonna have a look at Jupiter. And then I'm going to go and see if I can't see the comet. Incidentally, AM5 is working all right. That seems to be going okay. Just set the planet for that. I'm looking forward to seeing how this does. Later on, I will swap the filter out and probably do some deep sky as well. But yeah, looking good. So I actually figured out a way of getting the ASI Air to track the comet. So I've just done a Meridian flip, so I need to restart this. So what's happening is, can you see if we put the loop up more? So we can see the comet there actually. So instead of letting it auto star select, I actually just manually selected the comet like that and then told it to track. And then I reduced the exposure to about a minute, a, a second even, because it's a moving target anyway. I don't really need to worry about the adjustments being level. I need it to track the comet. So that's what I've done. And I've actually set it to three minute long exposures and they've been coming out all right, actually. So this is after the Meridian flip. You can see how it's been tracking the star and the comet looks like it's got two cores to it. Well, so if we go before the Meridian flip, you can see how the stars are blurred because it's been tracking the comet. And what I like as well is that we can see, I can see some like other colors come off of this comet. It's really nice. So by telling the ASI Air to track the comet, what I've actually been able to do is to follow it basically, even if there isn't a comet tracking mode in the app. I don't know what it's going to be like, if it's going to be a good photo or not until the end, obviously. I've, I've never done something like this before. I tried it with Atlas previously, but that didn't come out nicely. I ended up manually stacking that. But this time, maybe I've learnt my lesson. It does look good. It's a very impressive comet. Can't see it with the naked eye, though. So here's the one that just come in. And you can see that the comet is sharp again and it's blurred the little stars. So looks like we're tracking the comet again nicely. Look at this beautiful green with brown coming off of it. I hope this comes out really nicely. So those were meant to be plugged in. I forgot to plug my do bands in. And all my optics are now dewed up. So no wonder I was losing colour and contrast. Ugh.